thanks for staying with us. So today, we're talking about something quite interesting about family. When people talk about conflicts between married couples and homes, many of them often identify the, um, the mother-in-law factor. Particularly, they say, oh, the mother-in-law did this or did that. But in today's conversation, we're focusing on the sister-in-law and brother-in-law factors. Because there's always this issue of rivalry. We'd like to hear your thoughts on the potential rivalry that happens in a home where your sister-in-law or brother-in-law have to live with you and how to manage that entire episode. I don't want us to delve into the mother or father-in-law issues because I said we've always overflogged that. But you can call us on 081-270-53687-091. 398, and the rest of the numbers is on your screen. You can also call us on, um, you can also send us messages on, on, on TVC Connect, hashtag your VTVC, so we can read your tweets. Um, so this issue of um, family, I know we've discussed it before in the past, but it's been a while. And siblings, you know, there was a video that was posted some weeks back, or a couple of months back, where a woman was complaining that oh, her sister-in-law is just in the house doing nothing. She's there slaving out in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know. And I got a story from somebody that says that her brother-in-law lives with them. And um, he absolutely, she, um, because he, he's in university, you know, her, her husband doesn't allow him to discipline him. Because he's an adult, don't talk to him anyhow. He can come out. He goes out at night, comes out all time, whatever time he wants. And she doesn't want that as a bad example. For her kids, and she has growing kids. I think between the, I can't remember. I think it was between the age of seven and twelve. She didn't want them to be seen that as normal because, so her husband was your normal nine to five guy, but his younger brother um, was constantly going out to clubs, parties, hanging out. He didn't have his own place of his own, and she just didn't want that example for her kids. And but she didn't know how to confront this situation. She sent that message to me privately. But what are your thoughts on her managing? These are people somewhat either within your own age group slightly younger than you. So she should be people that you should talk to with confidence and, um, and directly. But because they are in-laws, you know, they have this mark of, ah, you can't tell them anything. No. How do you handle this situation? You might want to go first. Okay, so um, as I, I saw that video where that woman went live on her yeah. in-laws, her uh, sister-in-laws, and the way they did not even care. <laughs> they didn't care. <laughs> they just yeah, sat the So really, I think society needs to switch on. We need to flip switch. Mm. If a woman is in her home, she's not squatting in her home. I say it all the time. She's the hostess of that home. She needs to care for what people would eat, how they're comfortable. And if you come into that home and you're not productive, she can bounce you out. She can say to you immediately, go to where you can be productive. Because this idea of, eh, she has to put up with me, it's my brother's home, or my, it's our brother's home. Some people even are extended, they're extended. Some ah, <clears throat> are so extended, they should not even be near. And I remember that our fathers, my father and my father-in-law protected me from this kind of things when I got married. Nobody was allowed to visit me. Whether I close, why are you going to the house? You know, she and husband did not cut. Let them get to know themselves. It was grace in itself. Because I cannot bear it that somebody will be in my house. I wake up in the morning, the person is still there. It happened once in my house. In my second year, my younger brother, immediate one, was visiting. And his usual style is after his morning prayers, he'll be sleeping. So that morning, myself and my husband, usually because I'm an early bird, get up. My husband was cleaning up. My brother was sleeping. I went into I called his name. He answered me and continued sleeping. I went to get a bucket of water. No, she <laughs> I poured, it on. poured it on his head. Are you for real? He took offense. He's my immediate younger brother. I'm, I'm sure he's watching. He took offense. He said, sister, why? I said, leave my house. No. This minute, don't stay another second longer. Because if it was my in-laws doing the same, I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. If you are setting that standard now, and I did not see anything, tomorrow my husband will be like, she be the other day your brother came. So yeah. please, this one that you have brought into my house, is too early in my marriage, because mm -hmm. you know my nature. I can't stand it if it was someone else. So leave. He left, he did not come for a year. Mm. Until his, his boy yeah. settled. But I, I'm proud that I set you my set standard. That, yeah. that I will not take let me, let me Let me throw this in there, because... Um, you see, it's easy for someone to say, oh, I'm the hostess of this house, it's my house. Mm -hmm. But they'll tell you that you don't, you don't know the story before the story. Mm -hmm. we, we have a background. Like, this is my sibling, where we had nothing together. Our, our, our parents died early, or he was, he, I took care of this boy, or he took care of me. We, we were there for each other. So both of us had to have a bond. 
that regardless of the fact that, yes, you're married now, it's not your house, but you must respect the fact that my, myself and this sibling share a very unique bond that you cannot just come and throw away because we oh, are yeah, the, the hostess bond, of the house. So that, because of that, that, that bond, a wife is therefore forced to have to, listen, live with the shortcomings of this sibling. I mean, those are some of the compromises people Not have to come in. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that that's society. Mm. So I think that that's why we're having this show so that we can educate people. Each other, yeah. Um, as a mother of three boys, I am mentally, my, 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 my oldest, they are 10, but I am mentally preparing myself as a mother that no matter how much I feel I've invested and I'm close to my children, at one point they're going to grow up and fall in love with another woman and they'll be committed to that woman more than they are committed to me. They will love me and care for me, but their commitment, their heart is going to be with another woman, and I'm praying God will bless that woman already. We must know how to love and let go. You cannot say because of what we've been through, you will sit and hold on to the person. A marriage is between a man and a woman. Uncles, auntie, everybody around, you are wonderful, but you are not in that marriage and you shouldn't be. And we have created, it's a culture that everybody feels like we're together. It's our family, it's our brother's house. So it's not your house, it's your brother's house. And she has, he now it's has a house. A hus he, now, he now has a wife. Situation has changed. Not Let me give you my own story. My wedding, my wedding night, I got to my house. Everywhere was full. I closed the door and told my husband, I am not going into that house until everybody goes. I stayed in the hotel for three days until they emptied the house because I wasn't going to resume life as a married woman, frying egg for people <laughs> and cooking. I wasn't going to do it. So that night, as in the next morning, we were supposed to just spend the night in the hotel, then go to the house and then, you know, start life. Start life. And then I, I went to my house and I saw all the rooms, only uh, even our, the room that is supposed to be my husband and myself's room. Some people were there. They were saying, oh, we'll move our things out for you. And they were not ready to go back home. They were planning to do like a week. They managed themselves. Because they realized they had sent us out of the house and they knew that Tokwa is not coming home until all of them left. So they had to shorten their time in Lagos. Yes. So they went. The point, the, we, need to, we need to start changing that status quo. I'm not of the opinion that you shouldn't take care of your, your family members. Mm. You have, every human being has a responsibility. We are not, nobody grew up without anybody helping them. Yes. So you ought to be kind to those around you. Okay, so but they mustn't begin to think and feel entitled, entitled. To, to your space. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me bring in my story. I'll come to you, Mira. Let me bring in my story because my story is totally 360 from yours. Because on my wedding night, after, me, after we got married, when we got our house, day one of my house, my brother-in-law moved with us. Now, it wasn't a problem because I met my husband and my brother-in-law together in that Kokolo house. That was that one room, Kokolo. Mm -hmm. I met them together, squatting together. And they were there living their lives together. I, anytime I go to City Brow, there's always that, there's always, his no. brother is always there. So, yes, I had... I, they would. So, yes, that, from that day one, I felt, ah, but listen, I already knew that what do I want to throw out the brother? Because the house where they were living in, the rent was already up. So he was, that the brother was just starting work. He was just starting out his life. He hadn't really established himself. He needed a buffer. Yeah. And this is his older brother just got married. Mm -hmm. So for his older brother, come and stay with me at least until you get on your feet. Mm -hmm. So I, as a, married, as, as, as a married bride, if I wanted to be, ah, no, please, it's my new house. I'm a new bride. Well, I didn't do that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, just, just, saying, I'm just saying, it's important <laughs> yeah, that it's people different have way. different stories. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. just, just I, from day issue. one, mm. he came in, we moved in with us. So, let's, so there, were, there were people talking in my ears. They were, ah, can you, ah, can you? I said, listen, I can't throw the guy out. Mm. Yeah. So he stayed, and indeed, after about a year, I think two years maximum, he moved on because he got his own place. Mm. So he got the buffer in there, but I, I, didn't, I didn't say, I didn't insist that it must be my first day of the wedding. It must be only me and my husband. Yeah. Yes, Maria, so, let me tell you um, You're right. See, circumstances can be different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we'll treat it, you know, as individuals. And I don't think the problem is also that they're in your space. Is that when they're in your space, how do they carry themselves? Oh, yeah. Do they respect that you are the, we must, whether we like it or not, you are the host. This is your home. This is this, is this woman's house. They have to understand that. And in her house, there are some rules. This is the way we have to live in this house. Sir, uh, brother, sister-in-law, I lock up at 11 p.m. Please, whatever you need to do, make sure that you're back by 11. 
And if you can't make it, just let me know ahead of time so I don't leave my gate open thinking you're coming. You know, things like that. Yeah. Um, in my house, things are a bit tight. So when we have dinner, or we have lunch, we have food, we serve the food and everybody eats. Going back to eat more, um, you, you know, you, may, you, you can do that. But if you're earning something, can you make contributions towards the, the house. You know, mm -hmm. if you're an adult, yeah. you're earning money, you can make little contributions. Well, People just need to all understand that there's really etiquette for how, when you live in someone's house. You just yeah. need to understand that it's not your house. Mm -hmm. The only house that I feel that you can live and just, is your parents' house. Parents. Yes, sir. Ma'am, what, what, what if, like, what if I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. Yeah. What if mm -hmm. the wife came to meet you yeah. in that house? Um, that you and your brother were living together. Yes. And the, the wife now yes. came in. So it was your territory that she's now coming in. No, it's not your territory. Not your territory. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that's the, that's the it life. It's no longer your territory. Unless you're, that person is a person paying rent and your husband is living in his house. So both yeah. of you are now visitors in your host house. Mm -hmm. And then you must now conduct you? yourself um, in a way that is respectful to your host. Simple. The owner of the house is, if your husband is the owner of the house, you are co-owner of that house. Everybody else will come. Even our children, sometimes we tell them, it's not yeah. your house. It's See, not. There's there are some things, this is my, my house, my rules. If you cannot stay, okay. you, when you grow Let up, me go you quick, sort yourself out. I'm going to quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation and open our phone lines. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this issue of in-laws. And it's always easy to talk about all of them. We forget that we also have siblings, which yes. you talked about earlier, that our own sisters and our own brothers too all have their own issues. Yes. But Nima, you're going to say something before the break. Okay, so in my own case, amazingly, I have amazing siblings in law. All my husband's siblings are amazing to me. They come to my house, they respect my space. They want to take water in the fridge. They say, Nima, can we take water? And I'll be like, ah, it's your house now. So we understand the room. And it's also very important because I, I hate when I'm hang angry, I can't express myself calmly. If something is upsetting to my eye, I think it's an entitled confrontation of my space. I would declare it. So those kind of clashes, you understand yourself. It is important that when we are raising our children, we prepare them for these kind of changes. It's not like, you know, the case of two siblings. I know a family. They were just two of them, a man and his sister. They're from a very privileged home. I can't mention their names. And when he married, the younger sister moved in. But then she moved in with this entitled, wicked mentality as a girl, she won't even help with the baby or house chores. The woman was a medical doctor, always on call. Imagine that kind of person. You're with that person and you're not productive. You're not helpful. And so the woman continued to bear it because they are from the Yoruba clan where she has to be kneeling down if she, has to, if she had said anything to her. And so she waited it through. The, young, uh, the auntie now married herself. Fortunately for her, Kama was not far at all. It's the same thing. <laughs> it happened to she her. She came after a year of her marriage, less than a year of her marriage to apologize to her brother's wife that, ah, I must have been a nasty person because what I am dealing with mm. is beyond wicked. As in, I cannot, I cannot imagine that I did the same to you. So sometimes when we are raising children, we must let children understand that this thing is about a person's, sometimes a person's um, perception of how you do things. And your perception too. Some women will tell their daughters, stay in your house, stay with me, don't go mm. to your brother's home. It is so that they can avoid things like this and prevent it from happening. Because what the, the one I hate is that the siblings now gang up. You have a, a one yeah, in the so house, that one is now reporting to two people yeah. outside, or yeah. the other person. So there are different to scenarios. The I think, as Mariam mm -hmm. stated earlier, there are different Each scenarios. must be dealt with. Each must be dealt with differently. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I have seen some stories where a, a, an orphan has been forced to raise his siblings by himself. So he now has a marriage and he's having children, but he still feels that sense of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And because he knows that these children are already traumatized yeah. by the death of the parents, he allows them, he gives them that leeway to do a lot of things. So when the wife comes in, like, listen, this is my house. Mm -hmm. These are my rules. He comes across to them because they have aggressive. emotional issues as aggressive. Yeah. They have emotional issues they're dealing with. So the husband understands that my siblings are also, they're, 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 yeah. they're fighting their feet. So but we, we, how do we get the wife to also oh, meet them halfway. So with, yeah, with, situ with, with situations like that, I see where that happens. The man is very, usually, if he's a, the communicative oh, type. I'm sorry. Okay. I've been called and waiting for okay. a while. Honorable Ashun, go ahead, please. I do apologize. Hello, sir. This man. Hello, good morning, sir. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm hear? so sorry. Go ahead. You're live. Yeah. Well, um, actually, I want to commend um, your topic for this morning. 
I want yeah. to commend yourself for this money. Yes. But you see, there are two sides to this to a coin. Firstly, in the fact that as the husband, you are the door between your wife and your siblings. Mm -hmm. So when your wife has an issue with your sibling, it's for you to defend her against your sibling. But not coming back to your wife to tell her that I've fought my brother or I've fought my sister because of you. But it's going to cause an insult. And if you fight your sibling because of your wife, you don't need to go back to your wife and say, look, I've fought this. So you are the door. You should be the one to take all the heat. Because your wife will say to you that, oh, you are supporting your brother against me. Your brother will say you are supporting your wife against me. But the man should be able to take that. Right. That's number one. But more importantly for me, the wife, too, there's an attitude of you getting very comfortable with your own siblings. Yes. Excluding your husband's siblings. Yeah, that's right. So in most cases, you are comfortable with your wife, with your children. Your wife is comfortable with your children going to spend time with her own family. Asking her family to come over and spend time. But when you ask your children to go to your own sibling, your own sibling, your wife will say, no, oh, they can't go there. Oh, I'm not comfortable with that person. So there's going to be that right bit. So why two needs to let go a bit? And that is why, if you look at it today, most of our children are very close to our wife's family than the other man's family. Fantastic. Thank you. That's a good point. Let me let you finish the point you make. I'll come back yes. to this. So, Thank you very much. Okay, so we're talking that... Um... I was saying that we saw whereby there's a connection between yes, husband yes. and sibling. Yeah, so I say like with most people in that situation, and I see it also with maybe widows who already have children, widowers who have children, is that from the get-go, you know that you're marrying everyone. This is our story, and we're all connected. Mm -hmm. So we have to all like you. We have to all trust you to allow you into our family, or else when you come in, there's going to be lots of clash. I've seen that happen so many times. So you find that that person has to work her way towards or has to work his way towards um, um, earning the trust of everyone else. So when the person even comes, they don't see you trying to instill discipline as you trying to um, break them apart or yeah. anything. They already trust that your intentions are right. But I also wanted to point out that even though we're talking about in-laws right now, there are some in-laws that actually people will tell you they prefer them than their own siblings when they're around. <laughs> the in-laws... Maybe they see, let's look at, look at like a, a husband. He has si younger siblings who, who respect him, love him, because maybe he's made so much sacrifice for them. And that love and respect just automatically Goes they give to, to the wife. So every time they are there, they want to do everything to make sure that she's fine. But then you have the siblings who have seen you finish. <laughs> They know you, <laughs> we're exchanging shirts, you know, and everything. And all of a sudden, you think you can come and tell me, do this, I don't do that. And, you know, and, you, and I hear people say, when my in-laws are around, life is so much better. My house is so much, yeah. you know, oh, calmer. But my, when my own siblings come, it's yes, war all the time. Okay. So it's really about how you conduct yourself. I don't think it has to do whether in-laws or no in-laws. When you come to someone's house, how do you conduct yes. and respect that house? Let me take this call from Okbayemi. Good morning, are you there? Morning. You're live. Morning. Go ahead, please. I, I, I really, really love this topic this morning because it's as if you are in my home. Mm. One, there are some things this sister in law did at times that there is no normal them, the last ones. She will tell you to borrow her money and she will be in pain. You'll be seeing the pain yourself. That she is seriously in pain and she needed help. But after collecting the pain from you, that's the end of it. She won't say anything about it again. And you, no. There was a time she requested for 1,000 euros from me and there was nothing in the house for them to eat. I was so bitter within me, but I couldn't give her the money because she won't return the money for me. A lot like that. What can someone do to something like that? Yeah, taking advantage. Okay, I thank you very much, Okwemi. That, that's a sibling taking advantage. Now, there's another angle I will, will address that in a minute. Okay, let me come to you. In a situation where you and your sibling have a fight, you and your brother have a serious fight, and where it, got, it got all bitter. Of course, your wife, your, your husband knows about it. Your, 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 your spouse knows about it. You fought with your brother, and they tried to resolve it. But eventually, that, 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 that fight, both of you are able to resolve the fight. You move up with your sibling, you're not brothers. But the spouse who knew the buy about the fight, who knew the issues, the gossips, the backbiting that happened around that time of the fight, hasn't forgiven. Mm -hmm. So by the time siblings, maybe their own children come to the house, there's always that disconnect, which is what the Honorable Osho was trying to say, that, that there's, 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 there's that, oh, you cannot go to Kiddikos house. I don't, I don't trust them. I don't, I don't want God. Not because you have issues with them, but because there was a fight. Yeah. And you feel that there's a problem. And then there's, it now causes um, animosity. 
because there's a trust issue. So wife doesn't trust husband's wife, children, or stuff like that. And you are now you only trust your own family. So there's that. So how do we as people, human beings, when you have issues with your spouses, with, with your with your siblings, how much of it should you express to your spouse? So um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm of, I'm, of, I'm of the opinion that you cannot, you can't, you can't determine who you would trust. You might meet <coughs> four very kind people, but you click with one, and it has nothing to do with the other three. It's just that your spirit's just connected best with one person. When it comes to dealing with in-laws, there must be fairness. There must be, you must strive to be fair. I, I feel that in that case, even if you are uncomfortable for the because you have children who are part of that family, you must prioritize that relationship to thrive. Mm. I have, um, because I'm an only child, I deliberately try to uh, let my children have a relationship at least with their cousins. Because I know that this is, you, you need to have people. And these are your people. They are, you are, you, you are the, they are both diggers. You must have that relationship. Even if at the time when my sister-in-law and I still had a bit of issues, we're going to know each other. My mother would be like, don't go. I say, I want my children to know. They are cousins. So even if me and my in-law will be giving ourselves, I, I will carry my, my children, children there. My children must know. They are cousins. Fun. So that it was, and now our relationship is amazing. But the children, they've always, the, the friction did not get to them all through. So it's impossible. It's, it, marriage is for adults. Mm -hmm. And there must be a high level of maturity to be able to handle the different dramas you are going to face in the place of marriage. Mm -hmm. so there are going to be different phases. You know, you, you mentioned about um, the proximity, if they're already extremely close. Mayam addressed the fact that you already know what you're going into. So you know that my husband lived with his brother until they got married. A month before they got married, my, brother, my other, other brother, elder brother got married. He moved out because he knew. It's about being responsible that mm. I cannot allow my elder brother marry his wife and I'll be inside the house with them. It, there will be... I'm already used to the way I'm, even though he was extremely close to his brother, he moved into a smaller one room. And that is out of respect. And this is, as I said, this is an educational show. So if you find yourself, your brother's about to get married, move as much as possible. But if you don't have the capacity you, to if move. If you don't have the capacity to move, then you will be the nicest in-law ever. Yes. You will take everything, even you if submit. they insult you. You will submit because you understand. Which is what I experienced with my own brother-in-law. He never, in fact, we never clashed on anything. He just, I knew the kind of, I knew he's an okra <laughs> person. Once there's okra in the house, my brother-in-law is fine. <laughs> you know, I knew what he was. So yeah. it was very clear. We had a very my respect. Case, it was even funny. My husband's younger brother was even kinder at the time I got married than my husband. Mm. I can just, hey, hello, bros, ah, father, I need bros. And he will go to market and come with bros. Yeah. Ah, I'm looking for something in this area. He will show up with it. When I'm coming to visit my husband, my husband, when he's coming, hey, babe, he wants to hug. His brother goes for the bags. Mm. I never seen, as in I enjoyed his siblings maximum. Yeah. It's simply responsibility. Little, yes. little things. If you don't have to stay with them, as little as, and you're earning something, toothpaste, mm. ah, ah, eh, auntie, okay. ah. Let's go to that. Let me, let me go on a break. Let me come back, oh. come and address. So in the case where, where you have to start staying in the house, what are the things you can do responsibly? That's what yes. we'll take on. Let's go on a break. We'll come back and we'll continue with our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So to add some spice to this, our conversation, we have a Nollywood actress, Anita Joseph. She's um, not just a Nollywood actress, she's a television and social media personality. She's not a dancer, she's an entrepreneur, <laughs> a philanthropist, uh, who has featured in over 300 movies and counts. She's extremely talented, has won Africa Magic Choice Award as Actress of the Year. Welcome with us, Anita Joseph in the building. Best of luck, you look amazing. Thank you. look beautiful, Thank and we're so happy to have you on the show. I'm blessed to be here. So before you came, Mm -hmm. We're talking about siblings in law, living in your house. You know, everybody talked about is it, is it nice for you to move in as a new married couple where you now have to deal with your siblings living with you? Or where you and your spouse are already living together? You now have a, a sister in law, brother in law moving in with you, or even staying with you. And even when they do stay with you, how, what is the decorum? What, is the, what should be the, their behavior that they're in, within the house? What sh how, how should they behave towards you as, um, as a couple? That's where we're heading to. But let me get your initial thoughts on this issue of siblings living with a married couple. Um, if these people just got married and moving together and the sibling comes to live with them, hmm. 
I get a CBO. <laughs> like, I feel it's too soon, mm -hmm. but it depends on the wife. If, okay, le let me say me. If I'm good with that sibling, okay. I will allow it. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't you be good with just your, just, most of them, let me, let, me, let me ask you that. Must you have a good relationship with all your husbands or your spouse's siblings? If I don't have a good relationship with you... Why you shouldn't you have? Me. Are you not a wife? Yes, I'm a wife, but, you know, some of those guys, are, some of them are, some, not some of them are terrible. From the get-go, you have to learn to love them. You know, it's what they give you. So for, the for energy. marriages, yeah, when you the marry, you, you have to stay with them to understand whether to appreciate mm -hmm. the kind of personalities that they, you know, or persons that they are, or you don't like. But if you judge them from outside, really, you never give them a chance. Yeah, but my in-laws are quite different because... I'm, I'm married to, I don't know, my in-laws, I'm blessed to have them. Like, I don't have any trouble. I do not have any trouble. But for other people, but... But if, do you as a sister-in-law give somebody or just... Yeah, you give, no. Are you a troublesome <laughs> sister-in-law? No, I don't even I'm have so time. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm not troublesome. You like trouble. No, I don't like trouble, but I, if you, you bring trouble, you, you I believe. Yes, <laughs> yes, but I do not like trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if this in-law is, is, is a good person, yes, I can stay with the in-law. But if I, as a wife, I was already, the in-law was already living with the, the brother. Yes. And I come in. Yes. And we're good. Yes. You can move in with us. That's okay. So you're the one movie, you're, you're the new one, you're the new addition. addition. Brother and sister, brother and brother were living together, peaceful mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. You now came as a wife. Yes. Should the brother move out? That's what I'm saying. If the bro if we're good, yeah. he will move in with us. He's fine. Stay with him. Stay yes. With him. He'll move in with us because if he doesn't have anywhere to stay in call. Exactly. But if we're not good, what me and Oga will talk about mood. And he doesn't have anywhere to stay. Would you put him out on the street? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a good person, I will allow him. <laughs> then we'll raise money for him to go. Find a place. Mm -hmm. Find a place. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about the modus operandi in the house. When you yes. have like, siblings living in your house. What okay, so what is the, just, just before we go into that zone, I wanted to say that, you know, you asked the question, yeah, must you like your in-law to live with your in-law? Mm -hmm. I think that in some cases, you don't need to like someone to respect. They are human beings. Mm -hmm. you, you, they, they might be, mm -hmm. you might not like what they do, mm -hmm. but because the person is a human being, you would, you would respect mm -hmm. and, and, and manage the relationship because mm -hmm. I'm always of the, take the higher road, be the more mature person. So even if, you're in a, if you find yourself as um, married into a family that they have a lot of immature people or wicked people or someone that their relationship, they're, they're not handling the things well. well. Mm -hmm. Your own person and your sense of maturity should help you... Let me stay on that a bit. Stop but it's, with them. But you will not avoid easy. the time you will spend with them. Mm. You will limit the time you spend with them, but when you are with them, you will not become like them. Mm. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me stay with that for a second, because we have siblings where you are... Because I'm your sibling, you are forced to love me. Mm. She's your sibling. So imagine she's a Sister Mary in church, for example, now, mm. and you are a sibling, and she's constantly telling you to give your life to Christ, stop blonding your hair, stop piercing, don't, you know? In your face. And, and she's in your face. I mean, so, but she has accepted you. And that's my sister. Well, me, I am Pastor Mary. I'm, pa I'm her husband. I don't want you in my house. Mm. I don't like the fact that you have a blonde hair. I don't want you dressed because I don't want my children tattooing. Yeah. So I have that issue, but she loves you. Yeah. So that's an, uh, how do I mm. accept, how do I accept to live with Mary and then Mariam's sister in my house when I'm the pastor? That, that, that's, that's the question. And, that, and mm. that's it, because it's easy to say there are some, you love people, but they would have their shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And when it's your sibling, you, 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 if you, even if you don't overlook it, you learn to live with it, but God help if the person is not your sibling. You will talk about it every day. Point it out every day, how this person, the person did not flush the toilet again. Oh my <laughs> God, he did not flush do, the toilet. I'm, exactly, <laughs> but if it was my sibling, I'm like, you have been doing this since you were three, please go and flush the toilet. I may yeah. laugh over it, but God help if that person is not my sibling. I'm like, how? How does an adult behave that way? Mm. And so it really would so take this is what I a think it will that. really it, it would take someone that's truly mature yeah. you know to do it. but i also say that it's about respect mm -hmm. people should have like guidelines for how you would you should conduct yourself in their homes mm -hmm. and you should not be seen to give preferential treatment to your one side. person to your no. side even if it's your children your children should not be allowed to get away with the behavior you will not accept from someone else. So everyone mm -hmm. would have to conform. So, but mm -hmm. I cannot no, imagine you. having to live with someone that you're not gelling with for the rest of your life. Right. One day, something would... The boss. Mm -hmm. Let me take Anto that comes to you, Nima. Anto, are you there? Yes, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, how are you? Very well. 
thank you. This, this is a very nice program. Yes. And uh, I quite appreciate that all of you saying there are all women. And uh, the, most of the problem we face in our houses is that they're just like I was not comfortable with the other person that so made permission that uh, immediately she came into the house, she wants everybody to leave the house. Uh, you have to study the situation, and also in every reaction you are going to take in the house, you need consultation with your husband. You see, some of us, we are all religious people, and uh, we can, it is so clear to us that the house is owned by the husband. So any decision you are going to take in that house, you need to consult your husband before you go in to take any decisions. So uh, it's not like uh, you, you got married, and somebody has stayed with his brother for the past 20, 30 years before you are coming into the house for the first day and you say the person should leave. How does it look like? You, you, you see, these are some of the things uh, you, we, we cause problems for our son. Nobody is wicked. Nobody doesn't want you. Even at the time when you are having the courtship, the brother or the sister knew that you are having a courtship with him. So that it's not like the other person that has said that uh, if the person is strong to leave, you can't come and check your brother out because you have married a wife, and then you check him out to go and sleep under the bridge or anywhere. It's not fair. Thank you, Anto. Please, so wait, 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 wait. No, no, let me let me address no, no, no. it. No, no, no. Because... Okay, I'll address it. Yeah. So there are three things, there are three scenarios we've done here. Yeah. Mm. The first scenario is where you say you got married, mm -hmm. and because people, visitors came, to your house. house. There was a large house. We were there visiting. The so he said, and you were in a hotel. So when everybody they all came, okay, please, clear the house. Then I move in mm -hmm. as a first couple. That's your own scenario. Yeah. My own scenario was the fact that I, I knew my brother, my, my husband and his brother were living together. Mm -hmm. And, they were, and he, hadn't, he just got a job and he hadn't really got anything to stay on. So he came in day one and we lived together. The third scenario was your own bro husband was living with his own brother for a long time. His own, out of his own volition, he felt that I was, well, my older brother is about to get married. A month to it, he found a place to go. So there are different scenarios. So you study your own situation and pick out the one that works for you. Okay. It's not one, one side fits all. No. Now you Besides, can say your own. Besides, my husband knows I'm an only child. I've lived in a nuclear family all my life. Like, I grew up with father, mother, children. Maybe a few child. times, and child, <laughs> me. Maybe a few times, one uncle will come and stay with us. But... I, I couldn't survive in a big household. That is valid. And mm. because he knew yeah. that, he could understand why my reaction was that way, and he supported me. Mm. It is important, what you said, both parties must be on the same page for it to work. And so, yeah. if that, because he seems to be talking from a pain point. Yeah. No, but wait, <laughs> let me say this. In, in life, everything, there should be an adjusting period. To it. Yes. When I had my first child, adjusting to motherhood was a school I never thought was possible. And it took a while. It, it affected yeah. my health. I needed to adjust. In our custom, there's the 40 days practice, the Omugwa practice. This is for the mothers to adjust. So the same thing. Everybody is with, from their background, a total package. As in marriage, they're coming with their past. Give them that time to adjust. And if it involves you staying, respect yourself. Mm -hmm. You must be mm -hmm. able to carry yourself. I wanted to respond when Miriam was talking about the responding. So a woman who, because we are focusing, it happens more on the woman's side, who comes out to say... It's your brother. The response should not be like, well, Auntie, let me just tell you. Cannot come and separate our house. Mm. This is our house. You, know, you give her aggression, she might just cook aggression for you back. Because she's not squatting. She's a full adult who decided to come and marry you. Did she come and beg you? Did she, was she homeless? <laughs> the mentality has to change. Because mm. once you... Okay, the way I see, I see things, when it affects my dignity, totally that conversation has well, been ruined. Let me give you a scenario, you though. Know? Let me give you a scenario. So you come and say to your husband... The way your brother is acting, don't be angry. You say year one, you say year two, year three is like, deal Imagine. with it. Mm. This then is who he is. You, you yourself are you not know? dealing with it. No, no. So yes. your brother, if your brother has a fault that is upsetting your wife, you have to call him to order. So, so, you so, have to say you so need there's to something my husband says. He says, says nobody, not, none of us are 100%. Yes. Yes. I used to just always get That's upset because my husband would use a tower and drop it. Oh. I just get upset. <laughs> and one day I wanted to make it a thing. He was like, you have your flaws that I overlook, that I don't make a big deal. Yep. Just pick it up. And I figured out, you know, there are some things just you can just don't pick it up and move on. It is not like... You know, delibitating or you know what, mm -hmm. you can move on from some things. Anita, what should if so? In, in a situation whereby I want us to go to the next level, mm -hmm. so now they have to live with you. 
where you are they, living with you, them. You said they. So where I'm talking about. Believe me. I say let us assume. Two more, sir. Maybe one. Yeah, okay, let's just let's let's, let's assume. <laughs> no, let's do two because let's do. Two. Let's even assume. I'm just saying. Let us assume the sibling have to now have to live in your own house. Mm. Mm. What would what what does a woman want, mm -hmm. or what does a husband want? For what do you what are your expectations of your spouse's sibling when you are living here? You've said the mutual respect. I think you somebody said mm -hmm. respect. Mm -hmm. So what are the various things we expect of a sibling living in the house? And a sibling, based on the video we had seen, doesn't expect to cook because you are the wife. She's saying it's your house now. Why am I? Why are you forcing me to come and cook in your kitchen? No. Just cook, I will eat. But your wife is saying, but help me. So, but also, well, my, the point is that, what, are, what exactly do you women want yeah. when a sibling stays in your house? Let me start with Anita. Um, I'm a very free person. I love crowd. I love people. House. Stay, yes, in my house. If my husband's siblings have to stay with me, even if they are more than two, and they are good, mutual respect, you must respect me. I like respect. If, I, if you pass me in the morning, you don't say good morning. I don't, if I don't hear your voice well, I'll call you back. You don't greet. <laughs> I, grill. Mm -hmm. I love my respect. You don't go to my port anyhow. Okay. In my house, you know, when we're growing up, my brothers don't go to the port. Unless my mother orders you to go to the port. Mm. And that's how, that's yes, that's the system I grew with. You know, you don't, I say, a man, you don't go to my port, especially when I cook. Mm -hmm. You know, if I tell you to go to the port, then you can go to the port. Don't mess the house up. Mm. Try clean and up. clean up. Mm. You know, do some things in the house. You, you, um, if the person is older than me, you know, or older than my husband, of course, I will give you more respect. Yeah. But if I'm older than you... Huh. When a sibling feels that, you know, my, my brother is rich, he has a help, he has drivers, he has like three janitors, they are there, they are cleaning, it's my room, they clean up the house, you at least, they are cleaning your own room, Shah. they are cleaning your room, so why must I clean my own room, you know, they feel, listen, this is my brother's money, no, he has sorry. money. Sorry, if the person is older than my husband, mm. that's okay, the house can clean his room. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying yeah, younger, I'm talking about like a younger, younger sibling. No, 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 my Mariam, husband won't even enter that room. What are your own expectations if you have a sibling or a husband's or spouse's sibling living in your house? My expectation is just that um, clean up after your, yourself, you know, just respect. Mm -hmm. You're there in the morning, you, we greet each other. I, I just, I think I'm, I'm personally, whether it's in-laws or my own siblings, I don't like people in my space constantly. I can't stand it, it overwhelms me. I like to have my space. Mm -hmm. So you can be in the same house as me, but I'm not the sort of person that will sit down with people in the sitting room and just be gisting, mm -hmm. whatever. And it can be taken the wrong way, like, oh, she's unfriendly. <clears throat> yeah, it's not that proud. from, yeah, or oh, she's proud. It's because I need to go. When I have to sit with people, I have to, I have to mentally okay. prepare myself <laughs> because the gist, I have to gist. I have to find gist. And oh. find gist and then sustain the gist. I, I, ah, can't, I can't do sustain that. sustain the gist. You know, I, I prefer to be by myself. I have a book and I read. At most, I watch a movie with you. So if you come to my house and you see that, you need to understand that I'm not being disrespectful. I just like my just faith. you. And if you just are respectful. See, if I, have, if I also need help, like maybe... Uh, um, I'm going off to the market and I have my child at home. Don't expect me to, do the, to go to the market and still look for ways to babysit the child that mm. is at home. Offer to do, do one something. thing. Okay, can mm. I do this for yeah. you instead? Or you go to um, get something and you work, you earn some Mommy money and you decide, okay, do you, I can help with, with a little bit with the grocery. Right. That's all. Oh, just simple, easy things. Nothing mm. major. Let me take this call from Yakub that I come to Nima. Yakub, are you there? I'm here. Well, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. And uh, good morning to you all. Good morning. I don't morning. know if I have uh, enough time to summarize this. Because uh, this very particular uh, topic, uh, indirectly, is talking about me. Uh, I want to share a little experience I had. Uh, when, I, when I moved to Lagos uh, 21 years ago, uh, my brother married that time. And then when I came in, I found out that the children that my, my brother was uh, carried at that time is just three months old. In the following day that I came into the house, I found out that she would cook, she would fetch water, she would bath the baby, she would do everything. And I asked her, I think that, okay, what do I need to do to help this woman? And I decided, to, okay, madam, just leave the aspect of fetching water for me, I will be doing that. 
I continue to do that. One day my brother called me, do you think you can do this? Because all of us come from the same feeling, we know ourselves. My brother wife is just one year and a half older than me. I know her very well in the village. Do you get it? So we are like playing together in the village. Before we, but I say, my brother, just leave that. I will do it. Do you know my brother said, call me again. Do you think you can do this? I wasn't getting what the message that he was trying to pass. Because he knows his wife. Molayo, because of the time. I started fetch this water from that day up to six years. I continue to fetch water because we are living in the uh, face me and face after that time. One day like this, I went to play because I'm a former uh, drummer boy. I went to uh, the former IG. I, he was uh, he's doing something about that time. We go there in the hotel. More I like, fetch water that very particular day to drop pool. Coming back on Sunday, I found out that the water is no more. I had the woman, I want to take that because I needed to go back. The woman told me that go and fetch another water. As at that time, she doesn't, she doesn't have a small baby. At that time, I said, Oh, madam, you finish all this water, you cannot even fetch come on, one pocket. The one that I saw in the kitchen, I wanted to use it so that I can go back. The woman, she threw all the water away. I said, Okay, so you can do this. You hold that and it's just one and a half years. I will continue fresh water for you almost eight years. And then the little water here, you throw it away. Okay, no problem. Do you know, as I go fetch another water, the woman instructs me that I must fill up the two drops. I say, hey. Eh? I say, okay, I will never do that. If I, if I can take that rubbish, it can my clothes. And, but because of the respect I have for my brother, I couldn't raise my hand. So because my device was beating her, I will beat her. But I don't they look at. So they said that the people living in our house say, Afa, just leave this woman. From that day, I was trying to leave the house before, but she doesn't know. I packed my load and raised my house and I get out of the house. All right, thank you, Yakub. Thank you, thank you, Yakub. You think Yakub has opened another side of this conversation to us, which is the side that we take advantage. So I take you in as a sibling, and maybe you do something, and then I, I as a wife or as a husband, take advantage of it, or I, 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 I get so used to what you do that I don't you become appreciate. Entitled I be, I become, yeah, I be, yes, I feel entitled, oh, forgetting that ah, this is an in-law. You know, the way we have this cap of, you know, they're in-law, you have to oh, have this no, special no, respect. Your father-in-law. Your father-in-law. Yes. So, that, so because they're helping me so much, so that's why some in-laws come into your house and they have that front of, don't you dare, I am in charge, this is my siblings, this is our house. So they don't give you that leeway at all. They don't give you that chance to come and disrespect them in five years' time. But yeah, I should be you that sweep the floor. Should be the you that wash the plate. Go and wash the plate. They don't want that because they want to retain that dignity of I am the Obaba Oko. So how that, that's another angle that we've not addressed. But let me I was up. just say that it's life. Yeah. When you live with people, after a while, things will happen, and we should put that in our heads. So that does not immediately turn that person into a witch or a wizard. It just means that when you live with someone, after a while, you, take you clash, you and then you just need to communicate and say. It looks like you're going beyond your boundary. I'm here and I'm helping you, but I am not expected to do it. And the other way around as well. Yes, we have asked you to live in our house and we're doing this for you, but you're not entitled to it. We're doing it because we can afford it. And once there's communication, see, when you respect people and you communicate respectfully, I feel a lot of things can be solved on that table. Okay, we have to wrap up on this. Let me just let the final words on this topic that I come to Nima. Ah, okay, uh, I really don't, I don't want anybody. I had lived, <laughs> at a time when I was a child, I think I was six, seven, five, six, had 11 of my uncles living with my mom. I was mm. traumatized on my mother's behalf, on <laughs> that entitlement. I hate it when, I can't stand that crowd. My house yeah. is small, really. If you must stay with me, you, your parents must have raised you the perfect person. Mm. Or else, stay in your house. If you know you have an attitude, don't come, because I will give you anyway. What your final words? Um, be kind. So even if you feel like you're, the person you're staying with, they are the richest people in the world, buy bread. You know, like, make it mm. your duty that every week I contribute something in the smallest way mm -hmm. to this household. Because... Toothpaste. Is, Mr. Nima yes, said toothpaste. Right, right. Yes. Oh, you, if, you, if it is toothpaste, if it, it is... Bread, duty just make it something that you do regularly. Let your... If, if your... Your, let your absence be felt mm -hmm. in a way that while you are there, you're adding value so that the yeah. day you're not around, you'll be like, ah, oh. this our guy has left, oh, ah, and he used to help with this, this, this when he was yeah. around. Yeah. If you are in a place, add value. Value. Anita, can I work on this? I'm sorry. I have, um, you know, I have this cousin of mine. He comes to my house all the time. We grew up together. He comes to my house all the time. He, he can eat anything. I don't drink, but there's drink in the bar. He will drink as much as he wants. 
but he cannot buy bread. He cannot buy sweets. He cannot buy. In, yeah, he cannot buy indomie. Coming. I said, you come here every day, you eat, you carry and go. I even give you money, mm -hmm. but you dress well. Mm -hmm. he, atten he attends Christ Embassy. He, you know oh, the way they dress. The you dress well. Mm -hmm. You dress well. You shop for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll see you at shop right. You're shopping drinks and food. But you cannot bring some to my house. Oh, you will not eat again. Even after I say, he's my cousin, but even after I say that, I'll still give him. You know, but some people are so tight fisted, you know. Just be nice, just be good. Yeah. Mutual respect, that's all. Right. Yeah. So for me, I'll just end with two examples that have happened to me, good and bad. So um, I went for my friend's wedding and I stayed with her after her wedding for so long. The, this couple, they really like me. We just have fun, you know, all the time. But from their wedding on to weeks later, my mom called me. I said, no, they're a newly married couple. No matter how much they love you, I want you to be there. Respect their space. Yes. I needed someone to teach me that. Yeah. So it's okay sometimes if you don't know someone, someone yeah, will teach you. Yeah, I'm you. And then mm -hmm. I've gone, <laughs> then, you know, there was, there's another situation. One of my friends, I had gone to stay with her in Abuja. And she said to me when I was living, she says, you are one of the best guests that I've ever had. You don't just come and want to occupy the space. You don't want to change anybody's routine. Yeah. Mm. You just do what you need to do. And I understand that because it's not my space. I need to respect what the guiding law is in that exactly. space. And I feel that that's two good examples. I think so. I think I can wrap up on that also. Just, just mutual respect, yeah. no matter how much. Uh, I'll call to, however, reverse in-laws. So mm. because of that, even though your in-laws are there, kind, also respect them. Know that they are still family and um, in either way participate in the house just just take things for granted Useful. support yeah each other i think that's really the nutshell of this conversation mm -hmm.